uh, good afternoon. It is Wednesday, November 8th. And it's currently 4.22 p.m. Uh, but I received this word at about 3.03 .03 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the Lord wants me to title this word, The Final Say. Uh, and when I was questioning in my mind, who is this word for? Uh, he started to say, to my remnant, to my bride, unstained by the world, my chosen, my called, my elect, my child, my sons and daughters, this is for you. Um, so as always, uh, because we want to be hearers and doers of the word, we don't want to just read the word and then not apply what we've learned. So the Bible encourages us to test every spirit. That means not to believe everything that you hear, but always take it back to the, the Lord. Be mindful, um, you know, open to prophecy, but don't just take it at face value. Take it back to God. Ask him, you know, is this word coming from your Holy Spirit? And if it is, what do you want me to take away from it? What can I learn from it? How can I apply it in real time to my life starting now? Um, so this is what the Lord said. And I'm going to give you some confirmations at the end. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end is death. My ways are higher than the ways of man. Man's reasoning and their limited intellect is foolishness to me. I use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That verse means much more than most people understand or comprehend, so I will explain. The reason my ways are higher than the heavens is because what limits you to bring them to fruition does not and cannot stop me from bringing it to pass. I choose the most unlikely routes to get you where I have ordained you to be. My resources are endless. Everything bends to my will, but I also harden hearts to accomplish it. On the surface, nothing looks like it could ever fall into place. And since it is your faith that pleases me, your doubt can delay, postpone, and hinder the things I have planned. But this is no surprise to me. I know your heart. I am faithful to perform my word. My word never returns to me empty. A lack of faith is like a spiritual handicap. But I will share something with you. Your disability only glorifies how much I am able. Creation groans for the anticipation of my son. If my sons and daughters withhold my praise, the rocks would cry out. The mountains bow in reverence to my name. My will always prevails. It is not my will that is hindered. It is your inability to see the possibility of my promise. I choose what is unlikely. I choose what no one else would. I do not choose the best candidate on paper. I choose the most yielded vessel. Those who I know will submit to my way, no matter where it takes them, no matter what is required, no matter how impossible it seems or difficult it gets. Doubt is the opposite of faith. Doubt is unbelief. Unbelief is a grievous sin. It means you are trusting in yourself, in what you can see, in what you know to be true, and more in your own wisdom and intellect than in the God of all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. With man, it is impossible, but what is too hard for me? What is there that I cannot do? Who rules and reigns above my sovereignty? I was given the name above any other. Who can stop what I ordained before the foundations of the earth were laid? If I know the calling on your life, if I know what you will face, the level of persecution you will endure for my name's sake, then does it not make sense to prepare all involved before I send you out as sheep among wolves? Shall I not prepare you in advance so you do not fold under the pressure? Shall you endure no suffering to become unshakable, undeterred and unmoved by their angry stares, their threats, insults and hateful opinions for my glory? 
must this not be purged from you? Thrown into a refiner's fire, how else will you come forth as gold? Like silver, seven times refined. These impurities must be filtered out. You must be able to meet my people with love in the midst of their hatred. Be not conformed, but be transformed. Let it happen. I am stretching you. I am pushing you. I am crushing you. I am breaking you. I'm refining you so that you look, act, talk, reply, react, respond, think, feel, perceive, and understand more like me, more like I do. You are becoming like Christ. That is what it means to be a Christian. I'm doing something you would never believe if told to you. But faith is the evidence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. You must not lean on your own understanding. That is a trap and a snare. You must seek my counsel in everything. You must deny whatever I tell you to let go of. You must be open to my counsel when it comes. You must trust me more than you would ever trust yourself. You must not go ahead of me. You must let me lead you. And you must follow me into the promised land. He took me to the following uh, verses. Forgive me, I did not write this first one down. It was Nehemiah chapter 4. And it is most of verse 14. Um... Then he took me to Psalm 37, 23 to 24. It says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong, for the Lord upholds his hand. Then he took me to Psalm 38, verse 15. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. He took me to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7, verses 21 to 22. Do not take to heart all the things that people say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. Your heart knows that you yourself many times have cursed others. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 13. Consider the work of God, who can make straight what he has made crooked. And he took me to John chapter 1, verses 35 to 37. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this and followed Jesus. Hosea two nineteen to 20. And I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. Then he took me to Isaiah. It was chapter 3 and the end of verse 12. O oh, my people, your guides mislead you, and they have swallowed up the course of your paths. Um. And he let me know that that was pertaining to um, seeking his counsel and everything. Uh, First Chronicles 14.10 And David inquired of God, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said, Go up, I will give them into your hand. After that, he took me to Ezekiel chapter 34 verse 14. And I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. As I was reading that, I heard the planting of my hands. Then you shall know that I am the Lord I have spoken. And I will do it, declares the Lord. And he took me to Deuteronomy 17 verses 10 to 11. Then you shall do according to what they declare to you. From that place that the Lord will choose, and you shall be careful to do all that they direct you. The Lord then said, This pertains to my counsel. Verse 11 According to the instructions that they give you, and according to the decision which they pronounce to you, you shall do. You shall not turn aside from the verdict that they declare to you, 
either to the right hand or to the left. The last one he gave me was Deuteronomy chapter 7. It was the last sentence in verse 7. It says, so you shall purge the evil from your midst. 